As a gourmet cook, Karen Harris believes presentation is everything. For her culinary creations to be successful, they have to look just right. And that's true whether she's preparing handmade ravioli or a bowl of imitation blood clots. Blue food coloring into the red jello makes nice dark blood. In Karen's kitchen, the gastronomical meets the physiological. Not only is she a talented chef, this former nurse is also an expert in medical moulage, or simulation. I love that color. It's her job to create mock body fluids, realistic-looking lesions, and pseudo-signs of sickness. This is Parmesan cheese and lemon juice. It looks like barf, and the best part of it, it smells like barf. So just why would someone who can whip up the perfect souffle spend her time mixing together pretend puke for the sake of public health? What do you think is going on here with this patient? Karen's foam mucus, her replica bile, her homemade kidney stones, they all end up here at Ridgewater College in Wilmer, Minnesota, where they'll serve as teaching tools for nursing students. Was he warm to touch? He's cold. He's cold. Cold where? Jeannie Cleary is the school's director of healthcare simulation. Her mission is to provide the most realistic medical training possible, well, still in a classroom setting. We run over 200 students a year through our nursing program. We aren't going to have, thank goodness, 200 heart attacks. But with simulation, we can have 200 heart attacks so that our students get the hands-on of that. Okay, about 15 minutes, and we defib twice. Like many college nursing programs, Ridgewater utilizes high-fidelity mannequins in its training scenarios. These computer-controlled patients have programmable heartbeats and blood pressures. With the aid of the instructor and some spiffy software, they can even communicate. Are you feeling any better? Feels much better. Good. What the dolls can't do, though, is manifest the physical symptoms of illness or injury. Most instructors simply ask students to imagine that patient A has sores on his chest or that patient B has an open fracture. Jeannie and Karen take things a bit further. The women might coat a mannequin's chest with tinted cream of wheat to signify road rash. Or maybe they'll spoon on a mixture of pudding and blue cheese so students can learn what it's like to dress an infected wound. <coughs> on this day, the students are staffing a mock emergency room. Their goal is to figure out what's wrong with each of their plastic patients. In order to do that, they need to follow the medical clues Jeannie and Karen have left behind. What he has is blue lips, showing that he has a low oxygen level. We make real wounds, we make realistic urine. To be able to look at those, you know, you know you have to look for something because they're always hiding something. So it kind of helps you with your assessment skills. To so just kind of look at the signs and symptoms of what they create. They can create drainage or, you know, amber colored urine and just kind of figure out what's going on with this patient from that perspective. And not just saying, oh, there's vomit in there and just like having to think that it's in there. It's actually in there and it looks like it. That's really helpful when like trying to see what, what we're actually looking for makes it real. To be fair, Jeannie and Karen aren't the first to employ grocery store offerings as educational aids. In fact, I remember giving shots, and I don't even know why we did it, to the state in oranges. I don't know if that was to be real, because I guess it felt like skin. But, you know, our students don't do that now. They give shots to a mannequin that looks real, feels real, and that kind of thing. So much improved over my day of nursing school. It's a nitro pill. Just place it under your tongue and let it dissolve there. Some might question the role of chocolate frosting fecal matter in a college health care curriculum. But as far as Karen Harris is concerned, subjecting students to the disgusting now will make them better at dealing with it later. <coughs> so that you don't react abnormally or to the patient and offend the patient. I mean, this is a life and death situation for them. And if they're bleeding and you're going, or they're throwing up and you don't want to touch them, you have no rapport. They have no confidence in you. And it's their life. And they need the respect. Let the students know that this kind of stuff happens. But, you, you know, there is a human being under there that needs your understanding and your care. And you want to lay on your right side? Yeah, I think so. Since Ridgewater College began incorporating these simulation techniques, students' test scores have risen, their diagnostic skills have improved, and their clinical comprehension has increased. Nursing instructors from Canada to Australia have taken note. They've all sought advice on how to integrate fake puke into their programs. There we 
we go. Is that okay? 